The six biggest reasons why people start too late to treat the malpartum baldness with FDA approved medications such as finasteride or minoxidil are the following. Denial, fear of side effects, laziness, it's a taboo topic, lack of knowledge and getting bad advice. I've seen this hundreds of times. People on Reddit almost completely bald starting to treat the malpartum baldness. But with four hairs left, what do you expect? It's certainly too late to get back what you have already lost. Now, if I had a time machine, what would I tell my past me? Well, luckily enough, I have one. It's a ring of power time machine. Let's do this. Who are you? Hi, I'm you from the future. I've come here to warn you. Warn me? Yeah, you need this so you don't lose your hair. In us, right? Exactly. Without it, you will lose your hair and fall into complete disgrace. But if you start taking it now, you will keep your hair and be completely invincible. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. No need to thank me. I'm doing this for me, not for you. Oh, by the way, buy some Bitcoin and Dogecoin. You'll thank me later. Woo! I'm back. Now, I wish I really had a time machine, but since I don't, I have to settle with the advice I can get on internet about hair loss. So I know that these are the six main reasons for starting an anti-hair loss medication too late because I asked that same question on Reddit. Now, if there really are treatments nowadays to fight hair loss, why does it take people so long to start doing it? Is it laziness? Fear? No knowledge of existing treatments? I pick the most relevant answers in each category. Now, let us start with the first one, bad advice. So there are many people certainly on the internet telling their story, how they got bad advice, especially at the dermatologist. Now here's a good example of that. This is Dave, 8D, saying, I'm 38. When I started receiving at the temples, I was just 16. There was not too much info out there on the internet. Also, the doctor just dismissed my case and told me not to worry about it. Luckily, my hair loss stabilized by itself in the early 20s. And now I only have to deal with thin crown and minor recession of the temples. Meanwhile, some of my friends became totally bald. So I have been lucky, yeah. That's true, like in his case, he certainly was one of the people who got bad advice from the dermatologist. There are many dermatologists out there that don't know or don't really care about existing treatments such as finasteride or minoxidil. And especially nowadays, there's more and more knowledge about this topic. But before, let's say 20 years ago, it was not so popularized. So many people in Dave's age really struggled with it at the beginning. We're really one of the first generations that are really lucky to have any kind of possibility to treat hair loss. It's a pity because we tend to rely a lot on doctors, right? So we think that when it comes to our health, they are going to be the ones that have most of the knowledge about any specific topic like hair loss. But it's not always the case. And I also think that it's because hair loss is not treated like a disease, but rather as a condition that is not life-threatening, which is of course true, but it can cause you a lot of stress, anxiety and low self-esteem, which is of course something that should be taken into consideration. Any possible treatment that can help you fight hair loss is for sure welcome and should not be dismissed. Okay, now, so let us continue with the second reason why people start too late to fight hair loss, which is denial. Now I have good comments about this of people that were in denial and thus started too late to fight hair loss. The first one is from the Boogie main <laughs> and he's saying I didn't notice it until someone took a video of me at the gym when I was trying to work out. I saw my crown I was like holy fuck. <laughs> that was when I was 31. Spent three more years thinking it will stop, it will be alright. Finally started treating it last year with finasteride and minoxidil and a hair transplant. So I think everyone that's suffering from hair loss is familiar with this feeling, which is denial. Me, personally, I also had denial at the very beginning. I thought maybe this was some transitory stage, something that would stop with time by itself. But of course it didn't. It just progressed and it got worse and worse each time. So if you are suffering from hair loss, the first thing you should do is, of course, relax, 
and accept that it's maybe a condition that you can't really change because it's in your genes. But like I said before, luckily enough, you have many options available to at least stop completely hair loss, which are not necessarily hair transplants like the boogeyman did in his case. If he had been more proactive, if he had not been in denial for such a long time, then he would probably not have needed a hair transplant in the first place. Now, the second comment I picked up was from Divine24 Hours. <laughs> I don't know how old that person is, but anyway, denial, he's saying. Last week I confirmed it for the first time and started looking up treatments because I've seen the get on finasteride now means. Now, I have to look this up, but I'm gonna put some of these means here on the screen. <laughs> After a few days of depression and breathing restless, almost non-stop, I ordered finasteride, which should arrive in a few days. Now, there's a few things here I want to comment on. First of all, bravo for Divine24 hours that he just went ahead, straight ahead to order some finasteride instead of waiting too long until it was too late to start treating his hair loss. Like, I also wish I had done this before. I also waited too much, in my opinion. Second of all, I want to comment on what he's saying after a few days of depression. I think that's also really common on people that suffer first suffer of hair loss. One of the first things you are feeling is, of course, depression because yeah it's your self-image right you cannot really fight it or that's what you think at the beginning and it tends to hurt your self-esteem and also your personality so it's really common here to feel a bit depressed but with time this should get better you should be feeling less depressed when you tend to accept reality and if you hop on a new treatment then you start also to see the results the new hair growth and that also gives you a new shine of positivity. Let us continue with the third reason why people start too late at treatment, which is fear of side effects. The first comment here I picked up was from Neocentrist Chat, and he's saying, denial of hair loss, fear of side effects of finasteride and minoxidil, and trips to the dermatologist are expensive. Could also be lack of knowledge, it was even possible. So, well, it was not only fear of side effects in his case, it was a combination of lots of things like you can see uh, also the Nile and he's also tackling the topic money of course getting on a new treatment like finasteride or minoxidil can be considered expensive but I wouldn't see it that way I don't know how much it costs in your home country but at least in Europe a 30 days package of finasteride should cost you around 20 euros or 20 dollars for minoxidil it's even cheaper and then everything of course is relative if you compare this cost with a hair transplant you would get if you do nothing in the future then being proactive and preventing the hair transplant is much much cheaper besides that you're not only tackling the money problem but also your anxiety right you want to feel good in your own body and preventing further hair loss is one of those things you want to be doing another good comment on this category was from a wavy wave <laughs> and he's saying was too scared of rectal dysfunction and here i am still rocking it hard after two months of one milligram every other day don't know about any results but i wish i started finasteride even a year ago not to talk about me actually realizing hair loss already about eight years ago. I could have had a huge head of hair right now, but still it's never too late. Well, uh, this is really, really, really common. A reason why people don't start finasteride, which is the fear of sexual side effects, such as erectile dysfunction. I know this is a really sensible topic, but let me just say in this regard that only 2% of people really actually experience erectile dysfunction or sexual side effects and the other 98% of people are completely safe and only experience hair regrowth. Having said that, my advice would always be if you are unsure and you are fearing the side effects, still start the treatment, look how your body reacts to it and let's say in the worst case you get any of the side effects then you can just simply stop the treatment and those side effects should also go away. That's why there's really no danger here. You can just really start the treatment and see how it goes. And at any time, just if you wish to, then stop it. 
Now, the fourth category here is lack of knowledge. This comment is from the user displays987. A co-worker of mine early on mentioned he saw I had early signs of thinning on me. It was not noticeable to barely anyone, but he himself struggled with hair loss and recognized it. And he told me about Finastride. I would normally just get unsolicited health advice to people, but I'm thankful he said something to me because I probably wouldn't have done anything about it until much later. And yes, many people know nothing about DHT or what causes it, even some doctors. So many think that male pattern baldness is caused by stress or what you eat. Maybe this could play in but it's not the cause. Once again he is talking about when he first started notice balding. He didn't know anything about DHT and that's normal like not everyone knows what dihydrotestosterone is and that that is the main cause of hair loss but nonetheless it was good that his co-worker pointed it out in this case i feel like there's two type of people in the world people that want really to help you out and people that are just mocking you because you lose your hair and if you're in the first category of people that are just wanting to help people out by pointing it out and saying there's possible treatments then I feel that that's something sweet and nice you could do. Okay so the fifth category here is laziness and for that I have a really good comment here. It's from the user Joe Nail. I didn't think it would work. I also had a very negative outlook towards treating it for the rest of my life. I was 34 when I started and the treatment is absolutely worth the results. At some point you realize a major part of life is maintenance and that there's a lot of things you have to do for the rest of your life to maintain a healthy and happy one. So yeah, this user was really worried about having to do this for the rest of his life. But that's in my opinion like true laziness and you should think of it like you're taking one pill every day which is less than one second. and. Instead of maybe watching a TikTok video, which is like 10 seconds long, you could just take away that TikTok video and replace it with taking one finasteride pill every day. And it's gonna be worth your while, believe me. Okay, and the last category here is taboo. This being a taboo topic. For that, I also have a really, really good comment here from the user Ibrox. Now, this user is saying, first time I heard of minoxidil or finasteride was just over a year ago. I've only ever heard people say there's nothing you can truly do about it. So yeah, once again, this is something really common when you have family relatives that are also bald, maybe your father or one of your uncles, you know that for them there was truly no other alternative. Because maybe in the 70s or in the 80s there were some hair transplant options available but certainly not uh, prescription medication such as finasteride. Finasteride was first introduced to the market in the 90s. So of course people still think that going bald is not an option. They think it's just a bitter reality that you just have to swallow. But that is changing nowadays because more and more people know about these drugs like finasteride and minoxidil and they know that at least you have the possibility to treat it. And some people start taking finasteride really early on and they never ever experience hair loss again in their whole life. So that's wonderful. Okay, thanks a lot for watching. I hope this video helped you to see the fears and the reasons why people don't start a medication early on and why you shouldn't do the same mistakes. If you like this video, subscribe and drop a comment what was your reason of starting too late or what are you currently doing to fight hair loss. Adios!